how about if we build it? This is a devlog slash tutorial. I had talked about the battle system in the second devlog, but somebody told me it wasn't an in-depth explanation. So I made this video to start uh, teaching how it works, okay? So you can follow this as a devlog, but also as a tutorial, as I will be showing how every single thing works. I will not be showing any progress about the game this week, because right now I'm working on revamping the UI and the UX battle system. So I thought that for the past progress not going to waste, I thought that I should use these assets to make a, a tutorial. So you can download the assets in the description to follow this and build this just as I'm going to build it. You don't have to be an expert to follow this tutorial, but you need a bit of knowledge about the fundamentals of C Sharp as a language with things like classes and variables and methods and also a little bit about the Unity interface. So you don't have to be an expert, but you need a bit of knowledge about these topics to follow the tutorial, okay? So let's go into this part, which is the first part of uh, the series of how to build an RPG battle system. Okay, so let's start with a clean slate. We're gonna go into the Unity Hub and I'm gonna check this one the 2D core, okay? That's the template I'm gonna use. Okay, so I'm gonna name this uh, Battle System Retro RPG. Okay, so we're gonna create the project. Great, so let's start with setting up some folders, okay? So let's go into create. Let's set up a scripts folder great now let's go into create and let's set up a sprites folder okay so after that let's rename this main camera to battle camera great so after that let's go into create an empty object and this is gonna be named battle manager great so now let's drag the battle camera inside the battle manager. This battle manager is gonna encapsulate everything that we're gonna build from now on, okay? So after that, let's set up the background for this uh, battle screen, okay? So let's go into the battle manager, right click, and let's go into UI and let's add an image, okay? This is gonna be the background image, great. So after that, let's go into the sprites folder and let's bring the images that I provided. You can download them on the description of the video, okay? So I'm gonna copy them inside the project and now we've got these images. This is the one that we're gonna be using for the background. Let's click it and we're gonna set it up in the inspector. We're gonna use here 32 pixels per unit. It's a single sprite mode. We're going to change the filter mode to 0.0 filter because we're using pixel art and in compression, we're going to change it to none. Okay. Let's click apply and now we can use it. Okay. So let's go and click the background image and let's drag it to the search image into the sprite when we selected the background image. Great. So now we've got this background image here. We can't see it yet because we gotta fix some things around here. So let's go into the canvas and here in render mode, we gotta change this to screen space camera. And it says we need a camera and obviously we're gonna use the battle camera. So let's drag the battle camera to an inspector into the render camera for the canvas. Great, so now we can see the image, right? But not quite right. So now let's change here the UI scale mode of the canvas and put scale with screen size. Great, so now it's getting better. After that, let's go into the background image 
and let's click in the inspector this button name set native size and great now we've got our our camera set so we can go back into the canvas and we can see here the reference resolution which is 800 by 600 pixels which is a great resolution for this kind of games so let's go into the game screen and we can see we've got our camera setup but we have to move, move this image because it's a bit low because we need space down here for the buttons to perform the actions of the of the battle system okay so let's select the background image and let's move it a bit up like around there okay so let's go into the game screen we can see we have this horrible blue black background that comes with unity so let's go into the battle camera and in the background we're gonna change this to black okay so that's black we can only see that in the in the game screen but it's black okay great so now let's go and start building the battle system so now let's go into the canvas and we need to add three things right now we need the image for the player we need the image for the HUD and we need the image for the dialog box that goes down here. Okay, so let's go in that then. Let's go into the canvas and add UI image first, the player. Then we can duplicate this and rename it. This is gonna be the player HUD. Let's duplicate this and rename this. And this is going to be the dialog box. Great. Okay. So inside the dialog box and the player HUD, we need to add some text. But before that, let's add the images for the player, the player HUD and the dialog box. Okay. So let's go into the player first and let's get one of these images. Okay, let's select this, the astronaut that we have here. Let's change this pixels per unit. Let's try 32. Let's go into filter mode, point no filter and compression none. Okay, now we've got it to use it inside the game. Let's drag this one into the player source image. Great. So now we should see it it's a tad small so we can scale it and it's going not going to lose any quality but we can also try going into the inspector and click set native size so if we set native size it scales better okay if you feel that it's at, uh, a bit small you can scale it a bit up but i'm gonna leave it right there right now mm, or, or maybe i'm gonna scale it up a bit okay so let's try this around there great so i'm gonna use it there uh, I'm, I'm happy with that okay so after that we're gonna go into the player hut we select it and we're gonna use this name stat box zero one that's the image we're gonna use for the player hut okay so let's drag it into the source image we can see it looks a bit clunky so let's go into the settings to start box one normal quality none compression filter mode point no filter and we're gonna leave it at 100 i think this uses 100 pixels per unit so let's see how it works okay so let's select the player hot let's apply the changes set native size so that's great okay so we can scale this up and it will not lose quality okay so let's select it let's scale it up holding shift i'm gonna zoom in and you can see there's no loss in quality great okay so we can place it where we need it like around there let's see yeah that looks like pokemon great so if we need to scale it up we do it later okay so now the dialog box it here we got it the dialog box it's this green one we can drag it into the source image here 
great or oh, not that's not the one great that's the one okay so let's go into the dialog box and change the settings i think this also is a 100 let's go into the filter mode point and compression none let's apply the changes let's select the dialog box set native size now we've got the resolution we need we're gonna scale it up hold shift while you drag it and let's place it like around there okay so yeah we're gonna scale it a bit the height yes that looks great okay let's go into the game screen yeah this is getting shape okay so now we're gonna start coding great so now let's go back into the coding side of this first let's go into the assets folder let's go into the scripts folder and we're gonna create some scripts here bear with me we're gonna get errors before this works some of this is go not gonna make sense for a while but I promise that in the end, everything is gonna be connected, okay? So don't worry about it if you get some errors or some bugs, this is gonna work when we finish. Okay, so first we're gonna create a script called battle manager. Great, so we, we have our first script. Second, let's wait for it to load. We're gonna create a script called battle hard okay great then we're gonna create a script called let's wait for it to load battle unit great then we're gonna create a script called creature base then we're gonna create a script called creature Okay, after that, we're gonna create a script called attack base. Okay. And we'll wait for it to load. And we're gonna create a script called attack. Great. So I think those are the scripts that we're gonna need now so let's start building this first we're gonna start building the creature structure so we're gonna use these things called scriptable objects which are exclusive to unity and they work like a charm okay so let's try them let's go into the creature based script let's open it and there it is and we're gonna start adding a library that doesn't come in the top we're gonna need it for for a function we're using okay so we're gonna add the library system great okay so after that we're gonna delete all of this we don't need it and the first thing we gotta do when we're working or building a scriptable object is delete the mana behavior and add the scriptable object name right there okay so this enables this type of entities or objects or whatever you want to call them that are gonna work like you're gonna see in some minutes okay so let's go inside the main class and i'm gonna write some variables right now it's gonna take me a while so i'm gonna speed up this part of the video and after i finish i'm gonna explain each one of the variables so let's go and, and type this. You can go pausing whenever you want. So I'm gonna speed up this part of the video when I write all of these variables, okay? So I'm gonna start.
Great, so now we've got the main variables of the base of a creature, okay? These are the stats and, and the attributes that every creature is gonna have inside the battle system, okay? So don't worry if you see some errors that is gonna get fixed when we start working with other scripts. So first I'm gonna explain each one of these lines before I go into the next thing. First, I'm using all of these variables, I'm using them as private variables, okay? Why do we need them as private variables? Because <laughs> we need them protected, so you can't change it. As the player, nobody can, can, can't change them, okay? So we're, go we're using uh, getters after the, the private variable to assign the, the value into a public variable, but the private one gets protected, okay? So that's the first thing. We're gonna use uh, an ID for for our each creature. We're gonna use a creature name, a description. These are all obvious. We're gonna use a front sprite because uh, as you know, we can have the creature on the left side uh, using a back sprite or on the right side using the front sprite. And we can also have a creature type. Right now, this uh, sends an error but that, that's because we haven't finished building all of the battle system, okay? So after that, we have the stats that involve the math of the battle system per se, okay? So we have the max health points. We're using also the getter. Well, we have the attack, we have the defense, the special attack, the special defense, and the speed. These are all numbers. They, they, there are numbers and we're gonna use a formula to perform the attacks and we're gonna see that later, okay? So I'm gonna continue building this, the base script for creatures and after that, you're gonna see how this works, okay? So I'm gonna speed this up a little bit and let, we're gonna get back so I can explain this, how this works, okay? So let's go back to it. Okay, so now we've got this class called learnable attack. And this uh, line that says serializable was the one that was going to give us error if we didn't add the, the system library, okay? So check that out if you get uh, an error on the line that says serializable, okay? Why is it serializable? Because we're gonna change the 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 things that are inside this class, okay? It's gonna be uh, public and we're gonna uh, modify it depending on which type of creature we were using, okay? So now let's go back in here. And before this enum, which has the creature type, uh, I'm using the creature types of, of the weapons of uh, Borderlands, for example. I'm not gonna use the Pokemon ones because they are too much, they are, they are confusing. So I'm gonna go with a simple system, okay? I love Borderlands, so I'm gonna use this one. It's got the normal weapons, the fire weapons, the shock weapons, the explosive weapons, the corrosive weapons. These are types of weapons, but we can assign them to, to creatures. I'm gonna use them on creatures in my game, okay? So now let's go before the enum we can add this line. Let's go and put a public list. Okay. And this list is gonna be named learnable attack of type learnable attacks. It's gonna be called learnable attacks which is the class I created below. And it's gonna point 
where it's gonna get the value from the variable learnable attacks right there okay so now we're getting an error where can we fix it learnable attack here it is attack yes yeah there it is okay so now we can add an align before this one we can add a serialized field private we put the same list okay which is the one where we're gonna get the value from okay in the public one okay so we're gonna go into private list we're gonna use the learnable attack class and its name is gonna be learnable attacks with lowercase l okay now we've got no error great so now we go to the top of the script and right after the libraries that we're using and right before the class, we can add this line, which is the, the essential one to start using a scriptable objects inside the engine as, uh, as, you, as you create any type of, of entity like uh, uh, text like images like sprites whatever okay so this is the line that enables this inside the engine editor okay so we're gonna open brackets we're gonna create asset menu we're gonna open parentheses we're gonna go and create a file name this is the name of the scriptable objects that are gonna be created you're gonna see how it works okay we're gonna create a creature fix this okay great and this is gonna go inside the menu named cre creature new creature okay because the creature menu is gonna have the attacks also okay so let's open these ones creature slash new creature and when we click that button, you're gonna see that working right inside the engine. When we click that button, we're gonna get an, script, an scriptable object of the type creature, okay? So we're gonna save this. This is the creature base. We're gonna save this and go back into the engine. And inside the scripts folder, we're gonna wait for it to compile. Inside the scripts folder, we're gonna create a, a new folder. It's gonna be called creatures. Okay, so let's go inside it. And if you right click and go into the create menu, you have a new menu right here. It's called creature. And as you can see inside it, we have a button to create a new creature. Okay, pretty cool, right? So let's create a new creature. And as you see, this has a different icon. Whenever you see this icon in Unity, it is a scriptable object. It's exclusive to them okay so our first creature is gonna be called player and we can go into the inspector and as you can see we have all the fields that we have to to put the information inside so the id of my player is gonna be zero it's gonna be called player the description is gonna be a purple astronaut from the japanese our space exploration agency okay we have to assign the front sprite we're gonna use this one for now let's go and assign the back sprite it's gonna be type normal we're gonna use random numbers right now then we're gonna fix this the math is gonna work with any numbers you put here okay but we're gonna use the, the standard numbers of the formula that works in these types of games, okay? But we're gonna fix that later. So we're gonna put here 100, we're gonna put 50 for attack, we're gonna put 50 for defense, special attack, 55, special defense, 58, and speed, we're gonna put 43, okay? 
and then we're gonna fill this bear with me a moment okay so it's pretty cool right and we have this object we added the information but the coolest part is that i can go into create i can go into creature again add a new creature this is gonna be called is creeks marauder and great i can fill the fields and see it's very flexible and i don't have to create the the base entity each time i'm gonna build a new one i can just go into the create menu and add a new one and i can scale this as much as i want okay so now let's go and put the id for the Scrix marauder let's put its name Scrix marauder uh cool angry robot let's gonna put the front sprite here it is let's gonna put the back sprite we're gonna use this one just to try we're gonna put uh chuck type on this one we're gonna put max hp 100 attack 34 defense 45 special attack 55 special defense 50 and speed we're gonna use 48 great so now we've built the scriptable objects for the creatures okay so now we go into building the attacks okay so let's go back into the scripts folder let's add a new folder called attacks which the scriptable object for attacks are gonna go inside and let's open the attack base script great okay so now we're gonna do the same as we did in the past one we're gonna delete this we're gonna change this mana behavior to scriptable object great and inside of it we're gonna add the attributes or, or the stats for a base attack okay so we're gonna start with the name of the attack where i'm gonna add the, the description i'm gonna add the the type the power the accuracy so i'm gonna type this and we're gonna talk about it when i finish okay so i'm gonna speed this up Okay, so now we've added the stats or the attributes of, of an attack, okay? So basically, we have a name for the attacks, we have the description for each attack, we have uh, the type of the attack, because the attacks have their own type, we have the power of the attack, the accuracy, and the power points, okay? So I'm using the same technique as I did in the in the past scriptable objects, I'm protecting my variables using getters, okay? So now don't worry about this because we're gonna get that error for some time, okay? Until until we start building other scripts. Okay, so remember to enable the scriptable objects, the creation of them inside the, the engine, we have to go before the class, we open brackets, we create asset menu, we open parentheses, file name, this is gonna be called attack, and this one is gonna go inside the same menu that we created in the past one. So we got we, we just gotta add the same line that we added in the last one, okay? So menu name, great. So we open these ones, creature slash new, great so we're gonna save this 
we're gonna comment this line where, so we don't get any type of error for now we're gonna go back and change it so we're gonna save this we're gonna go into the engine wait for it to compile and now i go into the attacks folder as i did in the past one right click create creature and see we got new attacks okay so now we have the functionality of creating attacks inside the engine and this will all work on the battle system okay so let's create the first one we're gonna call this uh plasma shot okay uh description of this attractive uh shot against any type of organic and non-organic entity okay the power we're gonna put 50 for now a currency 95 and power points we're gonna put um, how many times can we use this we're gonna put 20 times okay so the power points is the 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 number that defines how many times we can use this attack before we can uh, uh, before we can recharge it to start using it again okay so now we're gonna back go back to the scripts and we need to create like a middleman class to reference these scriptable objects inside the conventional scripts of unity okay so we're gonna use a middleman class that goes into the data of these scriptable objects so we can use it inside other scripts okay so that's why we created an attack and an attack base and a creature and a creature base so let's go into building the middleman class so we can reference these scriptable objects okay so let's go first into the creature class and we're gonna we're not gonna need the mono behavior okay we're just gonna need the creature class okay we don't need the mono behavior for this uh, middleman class to reference the scriptable objects okay so first i'm gonna write uh, the pieces of this script and i'm gonna speed it up and then i'm gonna go back and explain it line by line okay so don't worry if you get some errors it's gonna get fixed but I'm gonna start writing and I'm gonna explain it in a bit. Okay.
Okay, so that's all of the script for the creature, the, the middleman class, so that we can use the scriptable object attributes inside other scripts, okay? So I'm going to start from the top. Don't worry if, if you see some errors that is going to get fixed, okay? So don't worry about that. This gets an error because I haven't created right now the attack class. I created the attack base class, but when I create the attack class, this error is going to go away. So let's go from the top. Okay, so I'm going to uh, create a creature base. Remember the class of, of the scriptable object we just created, and I'm going to create a, a variable named base with, with this underline before the name so I, I can difference it one from the other okay so this is gonna be a private variable and I'm gonna use a getter for the public variable and this is gonna be named base with an uppercase okay so I'm getting the value of the base so that I can use it as a public variable and I'm doing that also with the level so I'm using a private level the private integer name level with the underline and i'm getting the value for from the i'm getting the value for the public variable from this private one and i'm doing the same with the attacks that are gonna be inside this creature okay so each creature is gonna have a list of attacks remember i had that in the in the creature base so i'm referencing it right here okay so i'm making a private list of a uh, type attacks it's named underline attacks and i'm i'm getting the the i'm setting the getter and the setter here for the value of the list of attacks okay and i'm also getting the value for the health points okay the same thing uh private uh variable public variable getting the uh, the getter and the setter so here we have setters because these ones can change okay uh, i'm i'm not adding uh, a setter here in the creature base because i shouldn't uh, change that okay but we are going to change the level we are going to change the attacks and we're going to change the health points of this creature okay so here this is very important this I have a class named as the main class, as, as the script. It's named creature, and this is called the constructor, okay? So this is the class that lets us use the, this class in other scripts or wherever we want in the game, and we can add the, the arguments or the parameters we need to create it in other places, okay? So here... We have the constructor, which is like the, the bare bones of this class, so we can use it in other places. So to create a creature, we're always gonna need a creature base, okay? We're using the creature base class, and we're using the variable named creature base, very obvious, and we're using a creature level to create a creature wherever we're gonna add creatures in other scripts, okay? So we're gonna assign the creature base value to the creature base and the level, the creature level right here, okay? And we're gonna assign also the health points to the max health points of the creature we are creating in any other place. Remember, this is just like the bare bones of any other creature we're gonna create. And right here, we're creating a list of attacks, okay? Of the type attack, okay? Don't worry if this right now doesn't make any sense. I'm going to explain it right now. We're using a loop and this loop is going to help us first. It's going to help us add new attacks depending on the level we are. Because we can tell the creature in the inspector you're going to see later. We can tell at which level each attack is unlocked. Okay, so this uh, uh, loop goes and sees at which level we are and if we are at the level that the attack requires it's gonna add it to the list okay add a new attack to the list and also we're gonna limit the number of attacks of each entity 
uh, to four. Okay, so we're also using here if the attacks dot count is bigger or equal to four, we're gonna stop adding attacks. Okay, so that is what this loop is doing. And under here is the cool thing of this creature. This is like like the the beautiful the beautiful thing of uh, RPGs right here this is the math this is how it works okay so we've got these variables which are public first we're going to see we have the max health points variable and we're got, we're getting the value from this result okay so i'm going to uh, explain this result we're using this method, the mathf.floor to in method. And this method, what it, it does, it, it gives us a whole number, okay? And which whole number? In case we get like a result from a, a math operation, like 3.5 is the result, the final number is gonna be three, okay? So it's gonna round it to the, to the lowest whole number, okay? So here is the math that this type of RPGs use for things like uh, the max health points or the attack or the defense or speed. Okay, so in this case, the max health points is uh, the, the max health points of the base creature. Okay, it's multiplied by the level value and then that number is divided by 20. Okay, and if the level is too low, this result is gonna be way too low. It, it can even be uh, something that doesn't give HP to the to the entity to the creature. Okay, so we have to add ten points for for the first levels of the uh, max health points of this creature. So after doing this operation, this math operation, we add. 10 health points so it doesn't it isn't too low okay so in the case of the attack the defense the special attack the special defense and the speed we're gonna divide it by a hundred so it's gonna be a much lower number a much lower result and in case it is way too low we're gonna add a plus one in each of these results and that's gonna give us the result of an attack a defense, a special attack, a special defense, or the speed of a creature, okay? So this is where the math is happening uh, to, to, to work between the two entities, okay? So now we're gonna go and see how the um, attack script works, okay? So remember, this, the creature uh, uh, class is the middleman class, to reference the scriptable object and to use it inside other scripts because we can't reference th those type of, of scripts, the scriptable objects, they are a different type. So this is the way that we can use them, okay? So we're gonna save this and we're gonna go and we're gonna build the attack script. So let's go back into the engine and let's open the attack script. Okay, so we're going to erase this. We are not going to need it. And remember, because this is the middleman class, we don't need the mono behavior. Okay, so let's go inside this and let's start building this. This looks a, a, a bit like the, the creature script. Okay, so we're going to reference uh, the, the values that we have on the attack uh, base. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to write it. I'm gonna speed it up and remember, I'm gonna get back and, and explain each line, okay. Okay, so let's go from the top. 
So let's go back into Unity. Let's wait for it to compile. Great. And see, we have no error. Okay, so let's open VS Code again. So we're on the attack class. As you saw, when I finished writing the attack uh, script, the error in the creature script uh, went away. So let's go back. I'm going to explain this. So as in the creature script, I'm referencing an attack base uh, uh, class and I'm naming it base. OK, I'm also creating a, an integer for the PowerPoints and I'm getting the attack base name base. Remember the underline uh, uh, lowercase and the uppercase for the for the public uh, variable. OK. So we set, uh, we have the getter, we have the setter for the attack base. We have the getter and the setter for the PowerPoints. And here we have, remember, the constructor. It's the same name as the class it's inside. And this is how attacks are going to be instantiated in, all, in other scripts. That's how we're going to call them or reference them. OK, we are going to uh, have an attack and we're going to give the name of the attack. OK. And there it is. We assign the, the base attack and we assign the PowerPoints of the base attack. OK, so now let's go back into Unity so we can continue building this. OK, so we're back into the engine at last. And before we, we go back into coding, we're going to build some things here. OK, so select the player hot object that we had created. Remember, this is the one. And inside it, we're going to add we, we're going to go into UI and we're going to add some into legacy. We're going to add some text. OK, so this is going to be named player name. And let's add another one. We can duplicate it. Remember, command D or control G in Windows. We're going to rename this and this is going to be player level. OK, great. And now we're going to edit it. Let's select the player name. We're going to put the text placeholder, go into the inspector and put the, the text placeholder. We're going to change the font. If you click here in this circle in the font, you're going to see that you're going to find this one called Pixelary, which is the one I included in the assets that you downloaded. So you can use it all over the game just by adding it to a folder. OK, so I'm going to click on Pixelary. And I can't see it yet because it's too dark. So I'm going to change the color. So let's go into color. And there it is. I'm going to change it to white. OK, so I'm going to move it. I'm going to put it like right there. I'm going to change the size because it's a, a bit small. So before that, I'm going to go into the player level and do the same. I'm going to add these two letters, L and a V for the level. And I'm going to change the font to Pixelary. Great. And I'm going to change the color to white again. OK. And now I'm going to move this. OK. So these objects are too big right now. But before that, let's get uh, a nice size for our font. Let's start, try 20. Oh, 20 is great. That's, that's the one we're going to use. OK. So let's select the player level. Let's put font size 20. Great. So that's where we're going to leave them. So we're going to scale these objects because they, they are too big. We don't need the object going all, all over outside of its zone. OK, so select it. And we're going to scale it back to where we need it, like right there. So you got to leave space in the case of the level one. You got to leave space for the numbers that are going to go here. OK. So this is like the size you, you need to. And let's select the player name and scale it back to there. OK, don't leave it going on top of the level uh, font, because if it is a long name, it's going to go on top of it. So leave it on the correct size, like right there. OK, so now we've got the objects for the hot of the player. OK, so now let's go into the scripts, back into the scripts and we're going to find this script called battle hot. We created that. 
Okay, so let's go into Battle HUD. Let's open it and we're gonna code the, the Battle HUD to see how it works. Okay, so this is a small one, don't worry. I'm gonna speed it up and then I'm gonna explain it, okay? So let's erase this and I'm gonna start writing. Okay, so we finished this script for, for now. This is how this is gonna work. If you can see here that we are using this text class, I'm gonna correct this, this is a text. We're getting an error, okay? Because this text class isn't inside the Unity Engine class uh, uh, library, okay? So we have to add a new library called unity engine dot ui that's the library we're gonna use when you we are using this type of of classes the text ones okay so now you see we have no error so i'm gonna explain this let me correct this creature name okay so the first one the public text creature name we're gonna connect this to the uh, player name we created we're gonna connect this one, the creature level, to the player level we created. And we have a variable name uh, underline creature, which is the one we're gonna use here. Let me correct this. There it is. And we have this method called set creature data. Okay. And this method is the one that is gonna set all of the data but we're not gonna use it here. It's public because we're gonna use it in another script we're gonna call it, okay? We're not gonna call it here. We are just uh, uh, building it here because it's part of the HUD, but we're gonna call it in another place, okay? So this includes the assignment of the value of the creature we're using. We are getting the name of the creature to assign it to the text object we were using inside the engine okay so the creature name dot text okay this variable we have here we're gonna assign the creature we're gonna go inside the base we're gonna go inside the creature name to get that text and assign it to this variable and as well for the creature level okay so the creature level which is this variable we have here is gonna be assigned we have this and two letters for the level and we open these uh, curly brackets to add the number okay so this as we are using this type of string this is gonna use here the letters and here because we're using the curly brackets it's gonna use the integer okay but it's gonna convert it into text so we can see it back into the game okay into the game the screen so we're gonna save this and we're gonna go back into the engine let's wait for it to compile okay so now let's go and select the player hot okay and we can drag this battle hot script into the player hot and it's gonna become one of its comp components okay so i dragged it two times i'm gonna remove this one I only need it one time. Okay, so now we have the creature name and the creature level as these variables and we can assign them. So let's drag the player name into the creature name and the player level into the creature level. Okay, so that that's how it works. So this isn't gonna work yet. So don't press play. We have to finish building it. Okay, so now let's go into the next script. Now we're gonna build the battle unit, okay? Before we go into the last one, which is the top of the pyramid, as I told you in the in the beginning of the video, this is like a, a pyramid, and we're been building the basis of the of the battle system until we get to the top of it, and 
all of it works okay so let's go and build the battle unit script so let's open the battle unit script the one we created before great so now we're gonna start with this one and this we're gonna we're gonna erase this for now if we need it we can add it later but we're gonna erase it so let's select this okay so like in the last uh the last scripts i'm gonna write this and then i'm gonna explain it so we're gonna speed up the video right now Okay, so this is the battle unit script. You're gonna see how this works. It's really, really cool. Okay, so first we're using the another time the creature base and we're creating a, a, a base again. We're using the, the level, which is public also. We're using a Boolean in which we are telling the battle system if this scriptable object or this creature is a player or is not a player why do we do this because of what we're going to see down there on the script give me a moment so here we use the getter and setter which is a short way of writing it for the creature and here we have an uh an variable of an image called creature image which is the one we're gonna assign depending if we are or are not a player okay on the awake i'm gonna get the component which which are the components remember the components are the ones that we can see in the inspector in unity okay so for example i can go into the player let's wait for it to compile i can go into the player and these are the components okay so i'm telling this entity that using this script i'm gonna assign this image that i say here which image with this method with the method called setup creature which i'm not going to use here either neither like the last one i'm gonna use it in the top script the one that manages everything which is the battle manager so you're gonna see how this works in just some minutes so let's go inside the setup creatures uh uh, method to see how it works so we assign the creature which is the new creature which its own uh, entity and its level and here we can see if it is a player we're gonna assign remember we can go into the creature and the creature has a base and the base has a back sprite remember the ones we've built and we can assign the back sprite if this entity that we are using for example this one if it is a player we're gonna use the back sprite else if it isn't a player we're gonna use the front sprite of it so this makes things fairly easy because we don't have to go changing between things we just we're just gonna uh, put a button here to tell the engine the game if this entity that we're selecting is or not a player okay so let's save this and let's go back into unity to build the the last piece that we're gonna build in this tutorial okay so let's select the player and we can add the battle unit to the player also remember we added the battle hut to the player hut so we're gonna add the battle unit to the player also okay so now we have the battle unit script added to the player as a component okay so we can decide right here in the inspector which creature this is gonna be okay and let's select one and i'm gonna select for now the player okay 
we're gonna tell at which level it is. We're gonna say it is at level five and we're gonna tell it if it is or it is not a player. For now, we're gonna say this is a player, okay? So remember, you have to drag the battle unit to the player and now we're gonna build the top script that manages all of these ones that are here, okay? So let's go into VS Code and we're gonna open the battle manager finally. Okay, so we're in the battle manager and let's see how this works. This is the place where we are going to call some of the things that we created in other scripts and that didn't make sense. So this is the place where things are going to start, start to make sense. Okay, so I'm gonna write it like in the past scripts, I'm gonna speed it up and then I'm gonna explain line by line, okay. Okay, so this is the battle manager for now. Okay, we're gonna add some things later, but this is how it works for now. First, we're gonna have two variables which are gonna be private, but we can change them in the inspector. The first one is gonna be of the class battle unit. Remember, we just created the battle unit and we created the battle hut, which are the past scripts that we did. So we are using this class and we are using two variables. First, the player unit variable and the player hot variable, okay? You're gonna see that we're gonna make the same process for the enemy entity, the enemy creature, and it's gonna be fairly easy because you know how to do this, but we're we're gonna need we're just gonna need to drag and drop things in the in the enemy entity. First, in the on the start function, I'm calling this function uh, named setup battle. Okay, and the setup battle function is the one that is calling the ones that we created in the battle unit for the player and the battle hot for the player. Okay, and remember inside the battle unit script, we had a function called setup creature, which was the one that decided which image it was going to use. Okay, so we're using this right here. Okay. And in this line 19, we are calling the player hot. And inside the player hot, remember, we had, which is, remember, the player hot is of class battle hot. Inside the battle hot, we had this function called set creature data. And we have it here. And we have to pass an argument, remember, the, the parameter, which was a creature. And which creature are we passing? We are passing the player unit and the creature, which is the one that we are using, okay? So now we're gonna save this and we're gonna go back into the engine. We're gonna wait for it to compile and we're gonna press play to see how this works. So we press play and we wait and nothing happens, okay? So think, 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 why is nothing happening? <laughs> So remember, each of these entities is mostly having its own script. So remember which one of these we just built, but we didn't add the script to the object. The battle manager, it has no script right now, okay? So we have to add the battle manager script to its own object. So let's select this one, let's drag it, and now see, now it's a component and it's calling to, to add the player unit and the player hot inside these boxes, okay? So let's drag the ones that we need. Let's drag the player into the battle unit of the player and let's drag the player hot into the player hot inside the battle manager. And now when we press play, we're gonna see the name of this creature we're going to change it so you can see we're going to put a longer name. Let's go into creatures. This one is named player. We're going to change it to 
Hideo Kojima. Okay, we're gonna name him Hideo Kojima. Okay, so we're gonna put its name here and we're gonna put its name here also. Okay, so if we press play, you're gonna see right now this battle unit is a player. We have to check the player box here, the boolean. Remember, we have to check it so we can get the right sprite. Okay. So we're gonna press play and voila, we have Hideo Kojima, which is level five right now, as we have here and we have the back sprite. So we should stop this. We're gonna clear this. And now we're gonna select the negative version of this Boolean. This is, this is not a player. And remember which sprite we assigned to this scriptable object named Hideo Kojima, we assigned the front sprite was this one, the one of Charmander. Okay, so let's see how this works. So let's go back into scripts. Let's press play and let's see what happens. And there it is, the Charmander. We have the name, it works fine. We have the level, it works fine. But now we have this entity which is showing the front part of, of it. Okay, so this is gonna be the same process for creating the enemy and we're gonna do that in the next video. But if you want to challenge, you can try creating the enemy entity, okay? Remember, the scripts are already built, okay? Use the same scripts that we already built and add the things that you think it's gonna need to add the enemy entity here, okay? We're gonna start with that in the next video. So we're gonna stay here because this was a long one. If I had a dollar for every time that my life took a sour turn, I'd be rich and rolling violet and hollering at your girl. I'd be making little money and spending it like I'm rich. I'd be making bad decisions and thinking that I'm the...